Okay, so tell me a little bit about how you got to this point. Uh, how I got to this point? That's a tough question. I mean, everything here is a reflection of me, right? So this is a part of me, like, you know, the Instagram live piece is about, like, when I went America's Got Talent, I went viral. And then the depression stuff, you know, that's about my personal effects, like depression, suicide with the strike me down stuff. You know, the clock is my fascination with the world. Like, these are all parts of myself that I've put through in my art in a way that people can understand and also maybe just find a reflection of themselves in. So I got here, I got here through a life of trying to discover and work out what it is that I want to do and I realized, in fact, what I want to do is just reflect what I think. Okay, so I personally felt like I was on a bit of an emotional roller coaster when I was coming around and you said that it's a reflection of you. So is that kind of how you feel? Uh, yeah, how I feel. Like, everyone will know me as being the happiest person in the world, right? Like, I'm very energetic, but I'm also extremely dark, and I don't mind talking about dark things. So when it comes to emotions, when I was, like, manically depressed and suicidal, there was, like, a few books I read, like A Man's Search for Meaning, for example, and I was trying to work out what is the purpose of life, and one thing I realized was that it was emotion. Like, emotion is the purpose of life, right? Like, love, sadness, happiness, joy. And when you're a manic depressive, like, your life is, like, up and down like a roller coaster. And you have this thing, you're like, I don't want to feel so low. And I don't want to feel so manic and happy. And then you realize the purpose of life is just to feel these emotions. And that's why people watch sad films and listen to music about things they don't really like. Like, you know, rappers' music that's like, wait, I don't associate with that. It makes me feel a certain way. Or I watch a sad film or a scary film to feel scared. People like feeling emotions. So I've put all of my emotions on the wall for people to experience. And I hope they, they enjoy them. <laughs> and you talk so openly about mental health as well, yeah. which is obviously something that's so important, so prevalent at the moment. How does that kind of reflect each piece? So this is about social media addiction, right? I made it so you're, you're President Trump. You're looking in the mirror and you get to be President Trump. And the idea behind that is like when I was America's Got Talent, you've got hundreds of people all over the world. Some of them are crazy. Some of them are like taking photos from my ex's Instagram from 10 years ago and posting them up again. You know what I mean? It's a crazy world that we live in. And then you get this social media anxiety where you want more likes. So I made this piece where it's like, guess what? And it can be Donald Trump. Right? It's just lol. Like, yeah, you, you feel like a monkey on Instagram Live. Like, now you can be a monkey. And then the depression one, it's like, I wanted to reflect the real-time emotions. So what's powerful about this is that every time something appears, it's the real time. It's the second someone's hit the tweet button, it's appearing on that screen. It's their emotion. I built an AI which can find those on Twitter by going through every single tweet available. And that's what it's doing. Um, Xanax is the real-time you know, rate of people taking Xanax. It's called easy mode, you know, I think we all like to take the easy mode sometimes before we take the veteran mode and personally I've always been one who's gone like veteran or expert you know video games like I want to play the hardest one I don't want to be the easiest one and then when you're depressed you realize like actually no I can't just battle through this in expert I'm gonna to have to go back to easy mode so it's like you know I'll take a pill and it'll just make all the pain go away and, and, and then you can try and find yourself again and that's what I did and here I am but you know, I'm saying it's a bad thing easy mode I think everyone needs to realize when they need to go actually whoa I'm gonna start again at the beginning and learn how to play this game properly but actually it feels like you're coping it with, with it now is art kind of your coping mechanism yeah for sure because I got to be myself like I've always had to be hiding behind a facade right I go on stage and I used to have to do magic and be all happy and be like hey I'm going to make you laugh and smile, which, don't get me wrong, is great. I love it. But sometimes I want to talk about some real serious stuff that I'm really passionate about. And a lot of people can't really deal with that. And I've realized that, well, now I can just put it on the wall in my art and people will go up to it and they can take what they want from it. I don't have to, you know, do this and tell them, like, directly because obviously I'm quite intense when I'm talking about these things. But if they get more impact back from it than this, then that's, that's great. But it's a way of me letting, letting it all out and just coming to terms with it all. But it seems to me as well, these are such powerful themes. This is more than art that you're trying to achieve. What is it that is your goal? I am not. I don't have any goal and I'm not like trying to achieve anything. Like, you know, someone in a, in a, who owned a coffee shop gave me a chance to put one of my pieces on the wall and then I just ran with it. And then it became a canvas for me to express. And I just made stuff because I wanted to. You know, and I made these like lightsabers. I wired those myself. Like, I, they took me hours you know, like I can't even begin to explain how hard that was. And they're hooked up to the internet and they're flashing based on the real-time suicide rates of men and women. And people are like, well, that's really dark. I'm like, well, is it? That's actually what's happening. And as someone that's been on the other end of that, on the phone to, like, calm, being like, I'm going to kill myself, I don't think that's bad at all. I think that's real. You know, if you want to shy away from real, then, okay, that's fine. You can go about living a happy life. But I like to talk about things that are real and, and live in the real world, not a simulation. And that's why I do things like, you know, the weed mirror as well and try and brighten up a little bit and, and, and the VR thing when I do, like, VR porn. It's like, okay, we'll just take the mood up a, a notch or two. Right? 
It is a strange juxtaposition, going to be honest. Where has your where has your <laughs> where has your whole kind of not obsession, wrong word, but your love for Star Wars come from? I just have to ask. I mean, I, I've always loved Star Wars, like always since a kid, like just always. I've always been a massive Star Wars fan. Um, you know, it was, it was the sci-fi film I watched when I was a kid. You know, that was my thing. You know, like that and Back to the Future. And like, I'm an nerdy dude, so anything that's sci-fi related is going to be like that. It's that's what I'm about. So yeah, just you know, grew into it.